definitely some healthy trees down there. It's hard to tell exactly what the landscape is. It looks to be about medium fuel, but maybe even at some point some taller trees as well. Just a little bit difficult to tell based on the limited light that we're working with here. But again, you are looking about due west in this shot right here, and that is Castlewood Drive along the left-hand side of your screen and where it curves up to the right near the top. That is Gilbert Street, and just in the last couple of minutes that we have been on scene, you can see additional engines moving into this area very aggressively. A cavalry of fire trucks now pulling into position here, and they are going to make every effort possible to prevent this fire from jumping those two roads. That's the direction this fire is moving in. That's the direction the smoke is blowing towards, and that is the direction where if it was to jump one of those roads, we would have uh, some property in danger here. So right now, uh, this looks like uh, you know a relatively tame situation compared to the fires that we've been looking at for most of the day. And again, a very aggressive firefight underway here in Fullerton. But as of right now, they are doing an excellent job of at least trying to keep this fire away from those two roads or at least prevent it from jumping. But nonetheless, you can see there is some wind down there. That means that there's always the potential for embers to go flying into that neighborhood, in which case we would have a whole nother situation, something firefighters are very keenly aware of at this very moment, which is why you are seeing the response here by LA County firefighters. Once again, welcome everybody. If you're just now joining us here on Facebook Live or ABC7.com and on Twitter and YouTube, you are taking a live look at a fire here in Fullerton near the corner of Gilbert Street and Castlewood Drive right next to the Nora Kuttner Recreational Trail. Uh, a group of homes, a neighborhood in fact, just to the south side now being evacuated on the south side of Castlewood Drive. You are looking at brush on the north side of Castlewood Drive and right there through the center of your screen that is Castlewood Drive where numerous resources are now being put into place here to prevent this fire from moving beyond Gilbert and beyond Castlewood Drive. You can see a whole line of fire trucks, in fact dozens of fire trucks ready to engage in structure protection while those helicopters continue to drop water on this fire. They are absolutely trying to drown this fire very, very aggressively. We have seen numerous water drops taking place here in the last five minutes. I have already lost count, but they are continuing at a rapid pace here. I'm not exactly sure where the water is coming from to refuel those airships, but the water must be close by because they are moving very, very rapidly and repeatedly over this fire. You still see that other one? Where is it? That would make sense. Uh, how come I can't, I lost where, oh there, oh yeah, it's going, it's still going. Yeah, definitely send somebody there, it's going really good.
Go ahead and show the fire. I know it doesn't look big on the screen, but that's about 10 miles, at least 10, 15 miles away. That's a big fire. Those water drops that we've been watching here in Fullerton obviously very, making a very big difference just in the last couple of minutes. You could see if we widen out just how effective those water drops have been despite the wind which is moving through here. Again, not quite as heavy as some of the winds up north that we've been seeing all day, but still very, very effective at putting out some of the larger bodies of flame that we've seen out here as this fire continues to burn a brush fire on the north side of Castlewood Drive here in Fullerton right along Gilbert Street where LA County Fire is setting up for structure protection just in case any of these embers drift over Castlewood Drive that would be the worst case scenario in this particular situation however at this point at this point it certainly appears that they are able to tame this fire at least for now, at least for now, the winds are the unpredictable variable here, variable here. but if they can uh, continue the aggressive aerial attack that uh, we're seeing up here, uh, that's going to go a long way, and you can see it's already gone a long way in a very short amount of time in taming what was... In we think, uh, perhaps more at this point. Um, and we have um, homes that we do believe are threatened, though we can't see them right now from this picture. This is our ground picture, and the reason we are not using Air 7 HD right now is because uh, Chris Christie is being diverted to another breaking story that's happening in Los Angeles, uh, and we needed to bring him over to that uh, to check that situation out while we continue to monitor it from the ground. But this is looks like it's burning in the area of the Coyote Hills Estates. That's what I'm seeing uh, from the sign on that wall. And I'm going to try to look that up here on the computer and to see if I can learn more about this community of Coyote Hills. Uh, again, this is north of Castlewood, east of Gilbert, and east of Coyote Drive, hence the name Coyote Hills Village. So I'm going to look that up right now while we continue to watch this live here with you. There's that sign, Coyote Hills Estates in Fullerton. Again, one of at least a, I would say, it's safe to say a dozen fires almost that have broken out in Southern California uh, today. We've, we've seen the largest one in Simi Valley, the Easy Fire. We've had the Harupa Valley Fire, the Riverside Fire, a fire earlier this morning in Calabasas that was quickly put out. Whittier Narrows Fire that broke out this afternoon. A, a, a fire not too far from the one that we're watching now in Yorba Linda, that's not too far from Fullerton. Uh, that one at about 2.20 p.m., another one in Fullerton in the Brea Dam area, and now this one. Okay, so more like, my, my counting is off, not, not a dozen, I'm counting eight now, but perhaps more uh, as I'm trying to enter something into the, my computer. Chris Christie, you're back with us. I'm sorry, I thought you were diverted to another story, but it's good to have you back. What do you see? Hey there, Michelle. 
Hey. Yeah, well, we actually are. We are departing Coyote Hills and now heading over towards a new fire in South LA that we can see very, very vividly from at least 10 to 15 miles away. I hope you can able. I hope you're able to see we can our see picture it. right now. It's right in the center of your screen. It's a little hard to tell in this shot. It's producing a lot of smoke, and it's got this fireball effect from quite a distance. You can see the glow and those vivid flames shooting from this fire. We were told that this is a pallet fire, a pallet yard near Firestone and Alameda, and there may be a, cons uh, a commercial structure involved as well. But the size of this fire is something to take note of, and it, 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 isn't, it isn't South LA. We're now moving in that direction, and as we get closer, we'll be able to look, give you a little bit of a better description of what's burning and, and, and how this fire is behaving. But suffice it to say, a rather large fire smack dab in the middle of South LA as we depart the Fullerton area where you've been watching, Michelle, that fire uh, as firefighters, LA County firefighters, attacking that brush fire very, very aggressively. We were seeing uh, two to three water drops per minute there at one point as they repeatedly dropped water all over that fire, covered about 50 to 20 acres, all on the north side of Castlewood Drive and all on the east side of Gilbert Street where you saw all of those fire trucks, tri fire trucks lining up just a minute ago. So it looks like they were able to make really, really good, strong progress. Nonetheless, though, we should mention, as I believe you might have been in the process of mentioning, there are evacuations taking place as a precaution on the south side of Castlewood Drive over there mm -hmm. in Fullerton. In the meantime, you can see we are continuing to move west towards South LA, where we could see a large fire, reportedly a pallet fire, coming from the area of Alameda and Firestone. That's what we're looking at right here. And it does look, even though we're quite a distance away, it does look like they do have a couple of open lines. They are getting water on that fire. Sorry, right, I'm back here with you. I'm I, I couldn't hear you for a minute there. Uh, my Actually, my, my transmission box that I used to hear you with ran out of batteries. That's how long we've been on the air today. <laughs> so I had to go it's switch. It's been quite a day. Yeah, so I had to go switch to another. So I can hear you now loud and clear. Thank you. And we're, we're seeing both the pictures, one from uh, the Fullerton fire on the left side and the other from you in Air 7 HD. And um, the problem with these pallet fires is they can burn for a really long time. It is very hard. They are very stubborn fires. We've covered many of them here on Eyewitness News. Pallet fires burn for a very long time. And you can see how tall those flames are. I'm really curious to know what the winds are like in South Los Angeles. We know they blow very hard in the canyon passes. But what are the winds like in this part of town? Hopefully not as bad. The winds here in this part of the basin are definitely not as bad, but still pretty breezy, much windier than a normal night. You could see just from the behavior of the smoke, and I should reiterate, we are still quite a ways away here, and you can see just how brilliantly this fire is continuing to burn. But you could see kind of the behavior of those that smoke. Looks like it's coming from... Uh, Looks like it's heading towards the southwest. So that same general Santa Ana winds that we've been dealing with all, all day are basically moving in that same direction. Looks like there may be some telephone poles right nearby there, possibly already involved. You saw some smaller explosions just a moment ago on the north side of it. But whatever is burning is obviously extremely flammable, somewhat combustible based on those explosions. And as you mentioned, Michelle, certainly has the potential, especially if it is indeed pallets or a uh, junkyard or anything like that, to burn for quite some time. Hard to tell from this vantage point what is surrounding this fire, whether it's other commercial property. I would venture to say that's probably a good guess. Those are usually in more industrial areas. Just a little bit tough to tell from this vantage point right here. The best locator we have at this point is the area of Firestone and Alameda. Firestone and Alameda in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, and this is uh, not what firefighters uh, need right now with having to worry about the Getty Fire. Uh, the good news with the Getty Fire is that most of the people who were evacuated have been allowed 
back into their homes, but there is still a small pocket up there in the Brentwood area that remains under mandatory evacuation, which would seem to indicate there still is some concern up there with the Getty fire, with the winds and the potential for a hot spot to reignite. So resources are stretched quite thin right now. We've got a lot of firefighters dealing with that and now I cop, I and, cop. And, and now having to deal with this huge fire in South Los Angeles, the area of Firestone and Alameda. We believe it's a pallet yard on fire. Yeah, now we're certainly getting a better glimpse now. You can see it does indeed appear to be a pallet fire. There are some other containers nearby there, some other vehicles oh. catching on fire as well, but you can see those pallets of wood now going up in flames. This is creating some scene down here. In fact, that's gonna be, uh, just to give me a second here. As we come up on it, that does appear to be Alameda. It's basically right along Alameda and just to the south of Firestone Boulevard here near Southgate uh, is where we are. L.A. City Fire assisting in this. L.A. County Fire in charge of it. And I gotta tell you something, it is rare, it is rare that you could feel the heat of the fire from in the helicopter. Wow, that's... I open the window and I can actually sense the heat from that fire. That's how, that's how hot that fire is burning. I don't remember the last time I can honestly say that, but there's such a concentration of materials down there. It is producing such a high temperature fire that we can actually feel the heat. And certainly during the day, if this was a daytime fire, you would see this plume of smoke for quite some distance. And that's what we're looking at right yeah, here. Yeah, this is lighting up the night sky and, and uh, it, I wonder if we can zoom in because it looks like a power pole is also on fire now uh, on the top uh, part of your screen there, Chris. Do you see it? I do. I do. It looks like either telephone poles or it looks like electrical poles right there, as you mentioned. And mm -hmm. certainly uh, it looks like that whole pole is now on fire, as are the power lines. And there goes some property across the street. Oh, no. It looks like it this looks fire like market. It has just jumped the street into some commercial property next to a market. Yep. I see that sign there. Looks like maybe uh, it looks like maybe a car, uh, maybe a bo maybe a body shop or a uh, a mechanic shop right there across the street as well. Oh boy! And now it just it, it, now you have to wonder about well, what is the potential for this fire to continue to move? Because clearly you can see the wind is a factor, uh, especially just watching it, just watching the behavior here and seeing that those flames jump the street like that. Uh, but this is incredible. Just a, a brilliant, brilliant fire, as you mentioned, lighting up the night sky here. Yeah. Well, I guess if there's any good news with a fire like this, um, unlike a wildfire, unlike a brush fire, you're not going to get the amount of embers, most likely, that you would with a pallet fire. I mean, we're not seeing those showers of sparks, though uh, certainly there will, there are some but not, not like you would see from crackling chaparral and, and, and burning brush, but it, it's certainly still a, a, a concern. Yeah, you still have uh, you know materials that are floating through the air yeah. and wind that has the potential of carrying it. Certainly not the same as a brush fire situation, but with the with you know certain winds, certainly anything's possible. But right now, I just I'm taken aback by the concentration of fire down there. That is, I mean, it's such a bright fire considering we were in Fullerton and we're able to see this from so far away, just to give you an idea. Now it looks like I see three, uh, three lines of water uh, now shooting onto that fire, and hopefully they'll be able to uh, try and protect some of the surrounding structures. It's a type of situation where they may actually pull back some of the firefighters in the immediate vicinity of that pallet yard and dedicate some of those resources to actually attending to the neighboring structures around here. And unfortunately, uh, I can't tell you exactly what's around here, but it does indeed appear to be a mostly uh, a commercial area. Mm -hmm. And while we keep your picture up there, we just want to keep our viewers uh, up to date on what we're seeing on the left side of our screen. That's a fire that has started in Fullerton. Uh, that fire broke out around a little after 8 o'clock this evening. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's called the Castlewood Fire because it broke out in the area of Castlewood and Gilbert Streets. And homes are being evacuated. Structure protections in place. 
A lot of firefighters are on this, and they are making progress. They are also making water drops, which is uh, good news. And uh, we're going to continue to keep you updated. But uh, right now, we're focusing also on this huge fire that's erupted in South Los Angeles that Air 7 HD is currently over. And uh, uh, Chris Christie indicating that there is so much heat coming off of this fire that he can actually feel it from where he's sitting in Air 7 HD. And that's not something you, you've experienced in covering wildfires, is it, Chris? I just can't remember the last time uh, that's ever happened where you can actually, I mean, it's lighting up the cockpit up here. It's, that's, it's, it's burning that brightly and so intensely that the heat is really something. Mm -hmm. I should also tell you that fire trucks are now pulling up onto 94th and 95th Street to try and access some of the neighboring blocks here and begin protecting them. Also, Laurel Street uh, is an area where uh, they are now looking at protecting structures as well, just in case the wind does indeed move this fire along beyond the boundaries of this property. But clearly, that is a concern. Yes, most definitely. Uh, it, we've already seen it spread to, uh, it looked like some kind of a small market, as well as a, an auto, perhaps an auto repair shop. And it continues to burn in a southwesterly direction, which is what we have been seeing with fires. Uh, you know, with the Santa Ana winds coming out of the northeast, that is very typical that the fire would be burning in that direction. And it is just really uh, illuminating the night sky in South Los Angeles. It can be seen from a very far distance away. Uh, Chris, when you first rolled up on this, uh, were the units in place fighting the fire? Yeah, when we were in Fullerton, there you, you could make out a couple of hand, a couple of uh, a couple of water cannons that were already in place. So they've been on the scene of this fire for at least a half hour now. Uh, we weren't exactly sure what was burning uh, until a few minutes ago, but clearly this has been going on for at least the better part of 25 to 30 minutes. And just in the last couple of minutes, you can almost see a little bit of progress uh, that they are making down there. It's still a very bright, big fire uh, with lots of material down there to burn. But you can, uh, what, was, what was originally uh, a giant fireball uh, now is taking on a little bit of a different shape and a little bit of a different character here as uh, the materials that are burning are beginning to uh, burn out. And certainly you can see that in this shot right here. Uh, doesn't look like there was any structure per se involved, but again, that's a little bit difficult to tell just based on the amount of light that we're dealing with. It looks like just piles and piles of wood pallets that are basically going up in flames. Third uh, transmission box. I'm sorry, I missed you again. We are, yeah, it's, it's really interesting when <laughs> you have breaking news coverage and you've I, been on so long that, yeah, that all your battery-operated uh, uh, transmission boxes are, are low on batteries. So I've now just switched to Mark Brown's uh, IFB box. So I can hear you again. And if our hey, producer there, in the back, booth... Michelle, sorry about okay, that. Okay, no worries. If our producer in the booth can hear me, um, if they could send an engineer out to the studio, please, for some more batteries. Okay, so um, Chris Christie... Back with you now as we watch this pallet fire burning in South L.A. On the left side of the screen, our ground crew keeping an eye on the Castle Wood fire in Fullerton, which I would say just from as I'm keeping an eye on it from our ground crew, it does seem to be uh, getting better, though it's hard to tell because we don't have uh, a helicopter over it, but we're not seeing the intense flames that we were earlier from the ground. So I'm hoping I've that is the case. I've got to tell you, Michelle. Yeah, you know, they attacked that fire so aggressively. Like I said before, at one point, they were dropping two to three, maybe even four water drops per minute. Uh, and obviously, there must have been a water source very close by. We couldn't find exactly where they were landing and getting it from. Might have been the airport itself. But in any event, they were attacking that so aggressively. You saw that line of fire trucks on Castlewood Drive and even, even along Gilbert Street. And the amount of resources they threw in there in a very short amount of time certainly paid off because as we were making our way over here to South L.A., that fire was taking on a whole other character itself. Now, they are evacuating uh, the neighborhood on the south side of Castlewood Drive. I think that's more of a precaution than anything else. The winds over there are still moving at a pretty decent clip. 
not like we've seen in Ventura County today and other parts of the IE, but certainly the potential for uh, that fire to jump is there. And for that reason, they are going ahead with those evacuations, but they are treating that fire, uh, well, they are really taking control of it, to say the least. And again, they were able to keep that as we were leaving on the east side of Gilbert Street. So that was some very good news. And now we focus our attention here where it looks like uh, while they are getting some water on the fire, I think the character of this fire is changing because whatever is burning, obviously lots of wood pallets are starting to burn out. It's just going to burn to the ground. Of course, as you mentioned, though, Michelle, it has the potential to still burn for a very long time only because of how flammable those materials are. Boy, what a dramatic picture you have right now, Chris, uh, the silhouette of the firefighter. And uh, you were talking about the heat that you were feeling in the helicopter. I can only imagine what he's feeling right now. I mean, right? certainly he's in uh, protective gear, but you would have exactly. to feel the heat, I would think. Absolutely. It's really remarkable. Uh, whenever you pull up on an industrial fire, especially those big warehouse fires, in many cases, they don't even know what's burning. In this case, they have a pretty good handle on the fact that it's predominantly wood, wood pallets. Sometimes it's a tire fire or some other kind of junkyard fires that we see that can really create really, really exceptionally uh, high heat fires. And this is certainly one of them. And you can see uh, the job that these firefighters do is, is just remarkable. I mean, uh, we, we call them heroes. It is heroic work, but that doesn't really begin to describe what they go, th go through. And on a day like today, uh, where the, the best thing that we could say is that the temperature outside is actually a little bit chilly. And so yeah. that always helps. But in a fire like this, uh, this is, uh, this is a, a scary sight. But uh, certainly they are not an exceptional danger just based on the direction that this fire is blowing in. They are on their hook and ladder trucks, and they are attacking this from every safe angle that they can. And if they can't, they'll pull back. They will, not put their, they will not put themselves in too much danger unnecessarily, especially for a fire that's out of control. You can see this section of the property is really going up well out of control, and there are not any firefighters in that alleyway. They will pull everybody back until they can find an angle where they can get water on the fire safely. Um, in this case, they are not able to surround the building, where on a normal day, if the winds were a little bit less and maybe there was a little better access to a fire like this, uh, maybe you would see firefighters and water coming from all different directions, all different angles, and they could surround the fire and drown the fire, like they say. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit different, again, partially due to those winds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chris, are you, do you have the sky map technology available if you pull out a little bit that we can see the, the streets in this area? Unfortunately, we don't. We've okay. actually switched into our news our newscopter uh, that uh, well, doesn't it. have sky map, um, and we were able to uh, do a little maintenance on that helicopter while we get Air Seven back up. But in the meantime, you can see that traffic is certainly mm -hmm. being affected here. Police now directing traffic. I believe that Southgate police possibly that's directing traffic around here. One thing I should mention, and we can go ahead and show this, Robbie, a uh, pretty steady line of cars now backed up on Alameda. In fact, uh, both directions, especially northbound traffic, really stacking up uh, along some of the auxiliary streets as well over here. So it's causing a little bit of a traffic headache, not a ton of cars out and about, but you can certainly see uh, this uh, particular section of Alameda coming to a standstill as they turn people around and clear the roadway for additional fire trucks to make their way in here. So it is causing a little bit of a traffic headache. I can tell you this is mostly uh, commercial real estate around here. I do not see any homes in the immediate vicinity of this fire, but certainly you saw that market across the street, some other uh, either car parts or an auto body shop uh, nearby as well. That's the kind of thing that we're looking at here. Yeah, I'm just looking at the map here, and, and uh, it, yeah, I'm not seeing that either, Chris. It, it does look like more of a commercial area, and um, in the area of Southgate. Uh, so this would be, looking at the map, this is north of the 105, and this is to the east of the 110. And so this is uh, just, this is uh, south of Huntington Park, and a little west of uh, the centers of Southgate. Yeah, so just just like at the south south edge of Southgate, yeah. north of Linwood, as you mentioned, north of the 105. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, certainly seeing some traffic buildup continuing here through Firestone Park and even all the way up towards Florence here. So certainly an issue to uh, keep in mind here. But as you mentioned, not a whole lot in the way of homes, mm -hmm. fortunately. Fortunately. And uh, we have a, a, a view from our camera now on the Fullerton fire. Um, and they are making good progress on that fire. That's the Castlewood fire burning north of Castlewood and east of Gilbert, east of Coyote Drive. There were some structures threatened earlier. There were some homes that were being evacuated. Uh, but we haven't heard of any uh, structures that have burned. And um, we're pretty sure it has not gotten any larger than the estimate of 10 acres. And this is, though, a very um, difficult time for people in Fullerton because they had another fire that was burning there earlier today in the Brea Dam area. So uh, to have two fires in a community the size of Fullerton in one day is is quite alarming and, and upsetting. And and then another one in Yorba Linda, which is which is very nearby. It just speaks to the danger that we are all in right now under this extreme red flag warning. You can see now a firefighter coming into view uh, on that live picture from our ground crew. Uh, they'll try to get that hot spot out, but they are, are making progress, which is good to see. Chris? Yeah, and over here, yeah, yeah, here as well, also making progress with this one. In fact, just in the last minute while you've been talking, uh, again, you can see the fire dying down just a little bit. That's not saying a whole lot, considering what a large fire this was, but the, the height of the flames is certainly starting to tamp down just ever so slightly, partially due to the water they're getting on the fire, and also, as I mentioned, a lot of that wood is starting to just, just burn away. Uh, it's very encouraging to see that they're making progress because when you first rolled up on this, Chris, it was uh, it was much worse. And, it really was. Uh, it was a different animal. Yeah, we, we saw it spread to that market next door. I'm wondering, is it possible to uh, get that view again and to see if they were able yeah. to put that out? Yeah, they were. They were able to get that out pretty quickly. In fact, even that uh, looks like that power line is still still sizzling. Yeah wondering if uh, if this is affecting power in the neighborhood mm -hmm. would not be surprised. In fact, I got to tell you, from where we are, if go ahead and widen out, uh, it does look like power in this eight or ten block area has indeed been been put down. So it looks like there is a power outage now in this vicinity here uh, throughout Southgate, or at least this section of Southgate. Uh, off of Firestone and Alameda, north of 92nd Street, all pretty much pitch black. And now you can tell as uh, cars start to line the street, you can tell where they're directing traffic and where you see basically zero house lights or even commercial buildings lighting up. So clearly a blackout condition uh, for about, like I said, an 8 or 10 square block area. Sorry, Chris, just getting an update in my ear on the Castlewood fire, and the news is good. Uh, forward progress has stopped, and uh, Carper, if you could tell me again, uh, I got the 20 acres, 20 acres have burned. No, no structures are threatened at this time. That is what we believe to be the case. So we believe there are no structures threatened at this time. Forward progress has been stopped. And the fire is now at 20 acres. So it has it, it has uh, consumed more territory. It has charred more land going from 10 acres to 20 acres. But they have been able to stop its progression, which is great news. Uh, that's the fire that we're seeing on the left side of the screen. Go, getting back now to that fire in uh, near the Southgate area. That's the one that Chris Christie is over in Air 7 HD. And uh, the good news here is that they are making progress. When Chris first rolled up on this about uh, 8.30 this evening, uh, it was just an incredible blaze and it had spread to a nearby market and what we think was a car repair shop. But firefighters were quick to, to stop its progression into the adjoining structures, the neighboring structures that market fire has been put out. And uh, it, is, it is contained now to this pallet yard, I guess is what you would call it. Right, Chris? Yeah, and now they are able to actually move more units and positions. So we're seeing more water 
uh, drenching this fire from a variety of angles, which is a lot different from when we first pulled up. You basically had two or three lines opened up, and they were all coming from the, uh, the west. Now you can see they're able to take up position around this fire and take on more of a surrounding posture and try and get a handle on it or at least tamp it down until they could really move in and, uh, and douse those heaviest flames there. Still raging pretty good, though, uh, nonetheless, and lots of uh, wood to burn and who knows whatever else might be stored in this yard. But what you can see is what exactly what we originally heard, piles and piles and stacks of wood pallets that are going up. Now you can look there, right there in the center of your screen is a whole nother section of pallets that has yet to burn. Oh and so this could continue to just kind of, uh, or probably likely will continue to chew through this uh, pallet yard before it gets much better. But mm. at the very least, they're getting water on the fire, but still a lot of wood to burn from my vantage point. Yeah, there is a lot of fuel there to go up in flames, but they, they're putting a lot of water on it, Chris. It's, it's good to see that, that they were there so quickly, and they have a number of laddered trucks. Uh, and I, that shot is incredible whenever I see it there of the silhouette with the, the firefighter. And uh, talk about heroes, just the danger involved here, how close they are to these raging flames. Uh, it's, 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 it's really something to see, especially at night when you have it looking like this. Yeah, you could even, if you look really carefully through some of those, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the background, you almost see these magenta color flames that are, uh, just so extremely, extremely hot and could be, uh, some other material that's burning aside from the wood, obviously. Uh, but whatever it is, is certainly creating quite a rager here in South LA. Again, just to help you get your bearings, we are right along Alameda near uh, Firestone, just south of Firestone um, and north of 94th. Uh, so just to kind of help our viewers out who are watching online, where you're in Firestone Park, where this fire is continuing to uh, chew through this pallet yard. Uh, lots of wood left to burn there. You, there you see those magenta flames at the top of the screen power lines running through this property or adjacent to this property and uh, now a full-on power outage uh, for this section of South LA. Yeah, uh, just another uh, swath, large swath of people dealing with a power outage. So many people in Southern California have been without their power in the Santa Ana winds. Of course, people living in the LA basin weren't expecting this kind of thing, but here you have this freak fire uh, this pallet fire, and because uh, power lines have burned, we're now seeing a blackout in the immediate area, and we're seeing some traffic developing as a result. The traffic lights go down, and uh, so people go into the mode where intersections are treated like four-way stops, and that slows everything down. It sure does. It sure does. In fact, uh, I could tell you Firestone is backing up a little bit, and really Alameda. Alameda in both directions just really, really slow through here as police direct traffic. Again, LAPD down there. I would imagine Southgate PD is down there as well. And uh, even uh, LA City Fire assisting LA County Fire in this situation. So this is officially a mutual aid situation. Uh, and now both fire departments trying to uh, get a better handle on this. And, and it does look like they have made steady progress, but still a huge, huge fire to deal with here. Fortunately, though, we now see that water coming from a number of directions, almost, I, I think, almost all four sides. Definitely definitely three of the four sides of this property have, uh, have firefighters shooting water on this fire. So we will see how this plays out here, and uh, hopefully what we don't want to see is this fire, again, try to uh, jump any of the neighboring streets and expose any of the uh, neighboring structures um, which is what we saw just uh, when we first arrived on scene here. Again, the wind's blowing uh, moderately, but, you know, it, it, it does seem to be manageable now that they've been able to get some more firefighters around here. Yeah, it's looking, uh, it's looking much better than when we first uh, connected with you at about, I think it was about 8.30 this evening, so we're about 40 minutes into this uh, uh, coverage, and it, I'm guessing it started, I don't know, maybe... 15 minutes before you got there, Chris, would you say? 
Well, it's a, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting thing because we were just pulling up on the Fullerton fire and we caught this out of the corner of our eye in South LA. Again, that just gives you an idea of of how big this fire was and from such a such a far distance fairly remarkable. We've even had reports on Twitter of folks seeing this fire from Long Beach. Wow. Uh, that's how far away you could see this fire originally when we first uh, arrived on scene. But uh, yeah, this fire is probably going on about an hour now. Just weren't sure what was burning until we got a little bit closer and we could clearly see that it is indeed uh, a yard of uh, stacks of pallet, wooden pallets. Um, and uh, if it's been going on for an hour, that probably means there's probably a couple of hours, probably uh, several hours uh, left for all of that wood to burn, and it mostly will end up burning itself out, despite the, the efforts of these firefighters, which hopefully will minimize the, uh, the damage beyond the, the wood, but that wood is going to be gone here, and this will be a fire that they are babysitting until the wee hours of the morning, well into tomorrow morning, I would imagine, especially uh, with the winds that we're dealing with, they will want to make sure that they mop this fire up 1,000% uh, and not let anything rekindle here, um, even once the wood is done burning. But still, this is going to be an hours-long effort uh, here in South LA, Michelle. Yes, I think, I think so, Chris. And we know these pallet fires can burn for a very long time with all that fuel, and we're seeing now... Uh, a picture of one of the power lines, one of the power poles, rather, on fire. Uh, one of several that we've seen burn uh, in this immediate area because of this fire. Uh, but the good news is that uh, the fire that had initially spread to an adjacent structure, a market, and what we believe was an auto repair shop, that has, has been put out and is now contained to the pallet yard. So what we're going to do is we'll keep an eye on this. We know, Chris, that you need to uh, refuel Air 7 HD and, and get ready for the 11 o'clock news and, and the rest of our fire coverage. We will certainly revisit this uh, as the situation uh, develops. And if there are any new developments, we'll, of course, uh, break in and, and we'll bring those to you. But right now, that's going to conclude our coverage. And we'll be back with more tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 and throughout the evening on our digital platforms. Thanks for watching.